Hi, I'm Mark from Kitchen Cider. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be designing and drawing out a large open plan kitchen. So I sent some plans over from Chris and he thought it might make an interesting video to see my design and thought process as I was drawing out his kitchen. So thanks Chris for sending them over. It's quite a large open plan area. So I wanted to show my process of first looking at the space as a whole and then kind of zoning it out and then focusing on the kitchen area and designing that specifically. All by hand with my trusty pencil and scale rule so you can follow along. So here are the house plans that I was sent. It looks like a fantastic project and I think it's going to look amazing. I'm very jealous actually. The open plan kitchen, dining and living area is in the heart of the house as it should be. So this is what I'm going to be focusing on today. So I got to work drawing it all out. So here we are, I've drawn the whole thing out, although I'm just gonna be focused on the kitchen primarily. I wanted to draw the whole thing out so we get an idea of how each area kind of interacts with one another. But for context of the room, it's a kitchen, dining, living with a, a pantry, kind of a separate pantry area here behind the kitchen. Got a hallway out to some other rooms, I think it's offices, bits and pieces back here. And then another kind of door out here to the bedrooms and things here. Entrance coming through here. And then we've got these lovely big patio doors, maybe bifolds, I'm not quite sure, out here, out to the garden this way. So the room itself is actually 11.2 uh, meters up to sort of the end of the kitchen. So that doesn't include the pantry, that's separate. And it's seven meters uh, wide this way. So really lovely big space to play with, uh, but we do need to get three elements in here. And as I said, although I'm primarily focused on designing the kitchen, I think it's really important to get a sense of the whole space. And the first thing I like to do when it's an open plan living like this, a large open plan kitchen, is to zone each section to make sure that all three in this case can fit with enough space to actually kind of have a decent living, dining and kitchen. And also so I know kind of how much space I've actually got to play with for the kitchen itself. Now, as I said, this whole space is 11.2 meters. And I have these kind of general guidelines, rules, things that I use. They're not set in stone. They can definitely be broken. Uh, but as a starting point for zoning, if it's a living area, I like to have between sort of three to four meters of space. Uh, so for instance, if the TV was on this wall, which it probably is, I want three to four meters this way uh, to sort of like the back of the sofa, if you like. Basically that's viewing distance. So, you know, three to four meters is a kind of comfortable viewing distance for most things. Uh, you know, the TV's slightly smaller, you can go smaller if, if you want a massive TV, really you should be a little bit further back, that's viewing distances. But three to four meters is a pretty good guideline for most projects in most houses. Uh, this is a big space, so we've probably got more to play with, but so sort of I want sort of three to four meters uh, for the living area. So it is a big room, so let's, let's go on the larger side and say I want at least four meters for the living area. For dining, again, I have this weird rule where I say three meters, um, like a minimum of three meters, and that's allowing for a table that's a meter wide and then a meter either side for the chairs and kind of, you know, to get tucked in and move around a little bit. Again, this is a minimum, like ideally you'd have a, a bit more, but like this is the kind of the things to, to, to think about to get us going. And then the kitchen. And so with the kitchen, I know we're gonna have a bank of cabinets here. So that's kind of sticking out into the room, basically what the depth of this. I need a walkway space and then an island. And so for a kitchen like this, it's really, it's you know roughly 60 for the cabinets. And then usually I say at least one meter, one to 1.2 meters of space for the walkway. Um, this is a bigger room, so let's say 1.2, although you know this, this could be more. And then an island, so say we have full depth cabinets back to back on the island, so 60 and 60, that's 1.2, so 1.2 deep. So you know, if we add that up, so 60 plus 1.2 is 1.8, and then a 1.2 island, that totals three meters from this wall to the back of the island. Um, but plus we'll need a bit of space between the back of the island and the dining room table. So with those kind of rough sizes in mind, sort of a four meters, a three meters, and at least a three meter, you know, plus, uh, we can start to get an idea and see if it all fits and kind of start to zone the room. So as I said, we've got a total of 11.2 meters, say we minus four meters for the living room and three meters for the dining room and three meters for the kitchen. That leaves us with 1.2 meters, which is great. Um, so that 1.2 meters we can kind of divvy up. It's probably gonna be 
uh, just off the top of my, you know, from the back of the island, 1.2 meters uh, between sort of the, the back of the island and where the chairs are, maybe not the full 1.2 meters, but you know, we've got a bit of room to play with and we might not need the full four meters for the living room, could be like three and a half meters. So we've got a bit more space either side of the tables, a bit more breathing room. But basically what this is telling me is like, yes, we do have enough space for all three zones in the kind of scale and size that we want them appropriate to this room. So to help you visualize this, I'll go ahead and draw the four meter line for the living room, a three meter line for the kitchen, which will then leave us this dining zone, which we could sort of position the table basically in the middle of the two, kind of what that leaves us. So we've got room around that, room for this and room for that. So there we go, that's them sort of roughly zoned out and it actually leaves the dining area uh, about 4.2 meters. Um, which is probably more than enough. It's nice to have that space, but with that in the back of my mind, I know that you know, with the kitchen, we probably can go a bit further this way if we want to, or when we have the island, if we do want some seating on this back side, you know, we want a little bit more space for those bar stools and bits and pieces. I know we've got it. You know, this is just a rough sort of starting point zoning out the room. It's really just to check that we can actually fit these three areas. You know, if this room was, you know, a bit smaller, it might be that we need to kind of like really think about like, okay, this living area is going to be maybe a bit snug or that, you know, that dining table is really going to have to back onto it and maybe we can't have as much space to play within the kitchen we've got to be careful with the size of the island we might not be able to have back-to-back -back cabinets and, and and make the most of the island size could be that we've got to have you know a cabinet and a shallow depth cabinet something like that it's just it's just knowing that actually yes this is this is big enough which to be honest just from looking at the numbers i knew but that's just experience you've got to uh, plan it out roughly i think it gives you a really good sense of space and you know what you do actually have to work with so there you go that's how i zone a space like that initially just to get an idea of how it all works for this video i'm just going to be focused on the kitchen so i'm going to redraw just the kind of kitchen area uh, at a bigger scale for you guys um so we can kind of like hone in on just the kitchen but i wanted to do this section to give you a better idea of the space how the kitchen fits in uh, but like i say now i'm just going to kind of zone in on the kitchen and we can just design the kitchen Okay, so here's the kitchen, kind of more zoomed in now. We're focused on the kitchen. Got the door to the pantry back here. This is the door to the hallway to the offices and bits and pieces. Uh, patio doors out this way. The entrance is just kind of down here. We'll have the dining area sort of here and then the living room even further back sort of this way. Uh, but as I said, we're focused on the kitchen. So again, the first thing I like to do is kind of quickly zone out the space to see the areas that we've got to work with. But before I zone out the kitchen, I just wanted to know about the kitchen layout for this particular project. As you saw from the architectural drawings, it was a, a kind of a run of cabinets and then an island. A lot of the time when I get plans that's not always set in stone, you know, what the architect draws in most of the time is kind of a, a placeholder. However, for this particular layout and this particular kitchen, um, with the rest of the room the way it is and the shape of the room, I do think that the layout that the architect has drawn is the best one it's just uh, it's just kind of refining exactly what those cabinets are what that looks like how kind of it, it's all going to work with the nitty-gritty of what's what but the actual overall layout i think is yeah it's, it's probably the correct one so a run of cabinets there and then the island there's not really another layout option you know we've got the doors up here and here so we can't really block these off we don't want to block anything off here and we don't want to stop the flow here we want this kind of continuation from kitchen to dining to living so really this is I think the best layout having this single run with an island in an open plan like this uh, really is a popular layout but it's popular for a reason because it, it works really well you know it's it's open to everything if you're stood you know uh, working at the island you can look into the room and that's that's the whole point of an of an open layout is that it's open so yeah, definitely this is this is the, the layout to go for. Right, so as I said, the first thing I like to do with the kitchen is to just zone out the space. And this one is a pretty simple one. I'm gonna have my kind of run of cabinets back here. Then I'm gonna have a walkway in front of it and then an island. So really I'm just kind of zoning out this space 
uh, mostly for the island really and there's just a few things to consider with the island because I've got the walkway here and this kind of goes into the hallway and other bits and pieces in the entranceway I don't want the island coming into that and similarly this side you know with the windows and the walkway into the pantry I don't want to clog that up I don't want to block that and also from a visual point of view um, it's really nice uh, this this whole thing is completely balanced so obviously that's done on purpose that the the width of the room this seven meters we have here we've got the exact same width for the walkways here uh, and then it's kind of just built in from that to this central point so with the island and the cabinets we need to consider that as well you know balance and symmetry obviously is, is an important thing here and with the island we want to maintain that as well now normally for a walkway for a distance between the kind of cabinets uh, and an island like this I usually say at least 1 to 1.2 meters however because of the scale of this room and what's going to be the scale of the island as well which you'll kind of see as as time moves on that 1.2 meters like I think we can probably afford to go a little bit further maybe 1.3 or even 1.4 meters uh, because as I said the scale of the room and also because earlier we've zoned it out we know we have a little bit of wiggle room to play with in terms of the zones for each section kitchen dining and living and that's one of the reasons why I like to zone out the whole space to begin with is so I know in the back of my mind actually I've got a bit more room to play with here and because the room is so large I think it's important to maintain the scale of space so what I mean by that is so the island's going to be quite big the room is quite big in itself and so the space around the space if you like needs to be appropriate as well so I think having a slightly larger uh, walkway than I would well I would typically do in a you know in a smaller space maybe 1.3 1.4 meters is more appropriate for the scale of this uh, as a whole so I think it's important to consider that as well so I'm going to go ahead and zone this kitchen out quickly just the cabinets here the walkway and the island I think I'm going to go for 1.4 meters for today just to kind of get things moving and zone out what the kind of maximum footprint of the island should be and then we can start filling it all in So there you go, I've just zoned out the cabinets there and the kind of footprint for the island. As I said, I've allowed 1.4 meters for the walkway here, just as a starting point, just, you know, a bit more space. And as it just turns out, I just measured, um, which I didn't quite realize as I was doing it, actually the distance to the edge of the islands on both sides to the walls and the window, that's also 1.4. Um, so again, in terms of kind of get, getting that feeling of space and evenness around here, 1.4 might actually be the correct one, you know, so it's a 1.4 kind of just continuous walkway around. And in terms of the island, so like I say 1.4, I've kept it inside here or, or gone up to this point, not the outside of the wall, but the inside, right? So we want to keep everything kind of contained in. We don't want anything poking out into the room. And in terms of depth of the island, I've actually done uh, 1.4 meters. 1.4 is cropping up a lot. Uh, that's really just the maximum size uh, I want to do because I mean slabs if we're going with stone usually they're three meters by kind of you know 1.5 maybe 1.4 uh, so I've just done 1.4 to keep it safe but I know if we really want to we could use a different material as well but that's also more than just two back-to-back -back cabinets cabinets are usually about 600 millimeters deep so two would be 1.2 having 1.4 gives us a bit more room so we could pull those cabinets apart a little bit and have uh, avoid down the middle or not depending what we're going to do so we'll, we'll find out if we need that this is really just the maximum footprint as I said and if you haven't kind of cottoned on already by the size of things you know we're copying this one here which is 4.2 meters so that means our island is 4.2 meters wide or long you can like 4.2 meters long which is huge <laughs> it's a huge island now this 4.2 meters is probably 4.2 meters for a reason uh, the architects done it like that it's a classic architect measurement because it's seven 600 millimeter cabinets and architects like to drop in these you know 600 millimeter cabinets that's a very standard size for a cabinet so they just kind of drop them in a lot of the times in plans so just seven of those you know 4.2 great what this doesn't account for is if it's, you know, not seven 600 millimeter cabinets, it doesn't account for fillers either. Uh, it doesn't account for if it's a handleless kitchen and we need a vertical rail in between those cabinets, you know, that all adds up. And so actually that 4.2 
might need to be you know a little bit bigger or we can't exactly fit seven perfect 600 cabinets or we might be able to you know we probably can if we pick uh, particular types of cabinets which which we'll get into but just to say that this can happen a lot of the time from architect drawings they've just kind of dropped this perfect scenario in and they don't take these other things into account it's you know it's the classic architect versus kitchen designer so if there's any architects out there i am only teasing obviously this is just a placeholder but again just something to be aware of now because this whole thing is a new build uh, and these are just going to be internal walls, just kind of stud walls. It's, it's just kind of for the look. I know that we've definitely, definitely got some flexibility with this, with this 4.2. So I'm not actually worried, um, you know, for the purposes of today, I'm not going to get too worried about, you know, exactly down to the millimeters. I know that if we need, say, you know, an extra 100 mil for fillers, or if we need a bit more for the, you know, vertical rails and stuff like that, I know that we can push these out a little bit further uh, we've got the room to do so and you know we'll just make sure that we do it evenly on both sides so we're we're maintaining uh, that symmetry and you know the, the same distances now i have an idea in my head already of kind of what i want this to look like but i just wanted to touch on the fact that we have this uh, pantry here or wall back here uh, the door to the pantry here and the layout option could be to actually remove this little internal wall and have the cabinets run you know all, all the way along here and we could have put in like you know a, a secret door which is which is all all the rage right now very trendy to have a kind of secret pantry door going back there that matches the cabinet doors you know that could be really cool and in a different scenario you know yeah i think i think that could work really great but this particular room and the way that it's laid out as i mentioned before you know it is very symmetrical this this width and the balance of things and how that's kind of centered so i think if we then had tall cabinets that kind of went all the way uh, when you come into the room and you're looking at the room your sight lines is going to feel off balance you know it's going to feel heavier this way uh, and also if we then had the island either kind of like then centered to the cabinets again it's going to just kind of weight the room kind of this way um, there might not be anything wrong with that you know you might think that's fine um, but it just means that kind of the balance between the the kind of walkway space the empty space here and here you know it's not going to be the same it's going to be off and so i don't know just kind of just for the sake of balance and what i think kind of this uh, architect and and um, and design is going for is balance and to some extent you know symmetry right so now we know what we're looking at in kind of more detail in terms of the kitchen and we've zoned things out we're going to start planning in and i think we're going to start with this back wall here so as I've said on the channel and on my website before, I think a lot of the time kitchen designs are like jigsaw puzzles and knowing the types and the sizes of the appliances that we want, uh, that we need to fit in, these are our edge pieces. <laughs> so we kind of really need to know these, find these first and kind of put these edge pieces in a little bit to then be able to fill in the rest of the kitchen. So I know for this particular project, they want to keep things integrated, kind of clean and minimal. And they're also thinking about going for a handleless kitchen design. So as I said before, we've got 4.2 meters along here, and that is seven 600 millimeter wide cabinets. And as I said, we may need to move these walls slightly for fillers or things like that, but I'm not gonna worry too much right now I know we can do that. So my initial ideas for this back wall is to keep it all tall cabinets, so everything full height, which for a lot of kitchen designs, I'm actually quite hesitant to do when it's a single run like this in an island, having everything full height and just kind of leaving the island to have your hob or cooktop and sink in you know, a lot of the time it can get quite crammed over here and there might not be enough room. However, this island is enormous, so I'm not actually worried uh, for this particular design. So I think, you know, I'm happy to go all tall here and help that kind of blend in because I know we've got enough room for your cooktop and sink and whatever else kind of need the distance and spaces between them on this huge island. So with that in mind, we need to get a fridge freezer or fridge and freezer, separate freezers and some ovens on this back wall. And because we're gonna have everything integrated and I do want a sense of balance here, I'm gonna go down the architect's route and have seven 600 millimeter cabinets. I think that's gonna be kind of a really nice balance across here. It's just how we actually kind of configure that. Now, because this is kind of the main walkway in from the house and you've got the offices and other bits of the house back here, I think the logical spot for the fridge and freezer and things like that is actually up in this corner here. 
So if you just want to come in from the office and grab a drink, you can just kind of here, or if you come in and, and want a drink, it's just here. You don't have to walk through the kitchen or kind of come around the island and up here to get to the fridge. So from an access point of view, that's why the fridge and freezer I want this side. I don't have to have the fridge and freezer together. It's not very often you need to grab something from the freezer, but having those kind of those items together, having your food storage together, I think is a good, uh, good use of space in terms of sort of zoning these kitchens out. Now, how we do that doesn't really matter too much in terms of the actual type of appliance. We could have a full height larder freezer next to a full height larder fridge, or they could both be 50-50 fridge freezers, kind of top and bottom. You know, it's really down to personal preference, um, but the space that they take up is the same. So these can be kind of adjusted and changed as things go along as we think about it. But in terms of the design, I want a 600 cabinet for a freezer and a 600 cabinet for a fridge up in this corner. Now this is a big kitchen <laughs> and it's an open plan kitchen with the island. You know, it's perfect for entertaining and doing, you know, a fair amount of cooking. So in terms of kind of oven and cooking facilities, I think really we want to go for two single ovens, two full-size single ovens, and probably a combi oven in there as well. So you've got your microwave and combination cooking as well. Now, because I'm a big fan of symmetry and, and balance, and I think it's really important for this room because of everything else, ideally the visual thing we're gonna see now is the ovens. So I want to kind of keep them central on this back wall. I don't want it to feel weighted either side. And if we're having two single ovens and a combi oven, putting them all in one cabinet in the middle, that, that's too much, you know, there's, it's the height of a, of a single oven and another single oven and a combi oven above it it's going to be too high, it's going to look weird in the cabinet, so I don't want to do that. So instead I want to keep those visual elements, those ovens that we're actually going to see, split across the middle three cabinets. So we've got two cabinets here, two cabinets here, so it's all balanced nicely. And because we're having these appliances separated, it means we can set them at the perfect height for the client. So not too high, not too low, whatever, you know, they're, they're the right height in these cabinets because we can set that. Now because a combi oven isn't actually exactly the same size as a single oven, I would pair them that combi oven with a slim warming drawer underneath so that the niche uh, for each of those matches. So again, nothing is unbalanced. So we've kind of have, if you're looking at it, it's kind of front on, it would be kind of single oven, single oven, combi oven with warming drawer, but they'd all have the same kind of take up that, that's that same space, that same niche inside the cabinets. So I'm gonna draw all these cabinets I've mentioned in now, and then we can kind of see where we're going from there. Right, so I've drawn those bits in. Uh, so we've got, I'm going to say argument's sake, this is a freezer and this is a fridge, although as I said, they could be 50-50s, it doesn't matter. Um, I've hinged the door so they face into the kitchen. Again, if you really want, they could open up side by side if they're kind of 50-50 to give more of that kind of uh, American style or, or French door style fridge freezer. But for the sake of this design, if I'm saying that one is a freezer and one is a fridge, I do want them to open into the kitchen. And then we have the three oven housing units uh, and I put drawers underneath, so it could be cupboards if you like, but I find drawers more practical, great storage. So all of these have drawers underneath. And in terms of which one goes where, actually I think uh, considering uh, we want everything to be as kind of balanced as possible, it might actually make more sense to put the combi oven with the warming drawer in the middle one, because that's the one that looks ever so slightly different. And now it's the same, as I said, it's the same size, the same kind of niche it takes up, but visually the combi and the warming drawer is ever so slightly different than the single oven. And so that could be dead center, and then you have single ovens either side, which balance each other out. I know, you know, sometimes I'm too obsessed with symmetry and balance, but hey, why not? Why not think about these things? Now, moving on to this last section over here, uh, I want to get in some more storage for one, uh, more kind of uh, pantry storage, if you like, dried goods. I think we need that on this back wall. Although saying that now, we do have to keep in mind, I should have said this all along, really keep in mind that we do have a pantry just behind. While storage is great, uh, it's not the end of the world because any bigger storage, bulk items, bits and pieces, you know, there's a pantry literally behind it. So I don't think we need to worry too much about having absolutely uh, optimum storage in this area. I think it needs to kind of be practical for, for what we want to use this for. But saying that, I do think we need some kind of pantry storage over here. Now, because the whole concept of this design is a bank of tool cabinets and an island, uh, it really doesn't leave anywhere to 
hide small appliances. So, you know, where's the toaster going to live? <laughs> uh, it can't really just, well, I mean, it could, but, you know, it's not going to look great just left out on the island all the time. So this is where I want to incorporate kind of some more uh, hidden kitchen design concept ideas. And I think the perfect thing up here is to actually have a kind of, although there's, there's 600 millimeters each, like uh, a 1200, so double wide cabinet that's going to utilize pocket doors. So inside here, uh, it's going to kind of be open. We're going to have some countertop inside and inside that, you know, uh, sockets and things in the back so you can plug in your toaster, you know, blender, coffee machine, whatever. We've got that area set up here and that's what this is going to be. Because we want to ideally keep this area clean of objects like that. It's, it's in the sight line of everything all the time. So, you know, these things, these small appliances can be hidden away in this kind of pocket door section over here. And as I said before, with other kitchens that aren't as big as this, I do hesitate a little bit having like uh, just full cabinets in an island and not having a secondary countertop space really uh, is what it comes down to. So I think this is a great way to still keep that look, but introduce uh, the countertop space, but have it hidden still. So I think that's another great way to kind of have that extra bit, that extra touch point, that bit that we can hide stuff uh, while still keeping that illusion of just like all tall cabinets and, and all kind of basically flush and hidden away on this wall and just let the island speak for itself. So I'll just draw these doors in. There'll be two 600 doors here, but as I said, they will be pocket doors and this will be kind of all open on the inside. So there you go, drawing that in, I've called it the uh, breakfast ladder. So inside, as I said, there'll be countertops, there could be drawers internally underneath, and kind of this maybe shallow depth pantry storage shelves above, uh, all of all of that kind of stuff really. So it's really great storage and uh, a useful area to work in and hide small appliances. But from the outside, we've got two 600 doors, uh, and uh, two 600 doors this side. So whatever we end up doing, whether they're full height or we split them kind of so they're 50-50, will match either side. So those balance each other. And then in the middle, we've got our ovens. So whatever we do with these ovens, whether it's drawers or cupboards underneath, it'll be the same across all three. Cupboards above, the height of all the ovens will be the same. So that's all matching. So what we have here is a really balanced back wall that just kind of sits into this, this back wall section, the, bo the bottom of the room, really. Really. Uh, we just want to keep that all balanced nicely uh, along with the balance of the rest of the room. Right, let's move on to the island. Now in terms of what we need to fit on this island, we need to fit a sink obviously and ideally around that sink we want a dishwasher and some bins and then we also need to fit a hob or cooktop and some decent storage on this island as well. So still a fair amount of stuff to fit in. So as I've said before on the channel, I like to design kitchens with zones. And the zones really we need here are we need a cleaning zone. So we've got, that would be the sink, uh, dishwasher and bins. Uh, we also need the cooking zone, which would be the hob or cooktop. And of course, we're gonna need a prep zone as well. And I think prep zones work particularly well when they're positioned between uh, a cleaning and a cooking zone, because you know, in your cleaning zone, you've got your sink and obviously cooking zone, you've got your hob, preparation, you can, you know, you need space to prep, but you also need to like maybe wash vegetables and stuff in order to then cook them. So having a preparation zone in between the two, I find works really well a lot of the time. So with all that in mind, I think kind of dividing the island up essentially into these just three zones is going to work really well. So really the big question here is, you know, where are we going to put the sink? Where are we going to put the hob uh, in, in this island? And I think this now comes down to probably personal preference, right? This is where you talk it through with your client and kind of walk through the day to day and what makes most sense for them. Now I've decided, I think for this particular kind of layout that we're going for, and just to make a decision, basically, uh, I want to put the sink more to this side of the island. Uh, so I'm going to have the sink bins and dishwasher kind of all together on, on this end of the island. And then I'm going to have the hob or cooktop <clears throat> on this end of the island. And the space in between the two is essentially going to be my prep zone. So that falls nicely in between the two. Now, the reason I've decided to put the sink this side is basically because, you know, behind the sink, we've got the breakfast larder area that I've created. And so if this is your kind of morning routine, say, you know, you're making your toast, you've got your coffee machine in here, maybe you want to make a cup of tea, so you've got your tea, coffee, mugs, um, bits and pieces in here, you're going to need access to water um, for, you know, the kettle for if there's a kettle in here, for instance, 
uh, or if maybe you've got a boiling water tap on the island, whatever it is, you, you still need access to water. And so I think having it directly behind kind of still keeps this morning routine, this kind of breakfast, tea, coffee making zone uh, closer together. Now because I really like balance uh, and symmetry I suppose as well but balance is probably more the word I would use and especially in this particular design because it is so balanced and symmetrical I want to do the same thing with the island you know I, I want to keep this balanced uh, in terms of kind of how it's split kind of basically down the middle uh, in terms of kind of these work areas with the prep zone kind of uh, straddling the two uh, but also in terms of kind of the balance uh, and symmetry of the cabinet choices that we use so looking at the, the island and the door fronts or draw fronts, kind of this all, all balances nicely. And because I know the bits and pieces we need, as I said, uh, you know, we need the sink, the hob, a uh, dishwasher and a bin. Uh, I know some of those sizes of things that kind of we need to fit in. So for instance, an integrated dishwasher, full size dishwasher is 600 millimeters wide. So I know we need to fit one of those in and I know one of the measurements, one of the door widths or draw widths, whatever we're gonna use is gonna have to be 600. And also because I know we want to fit a bin, the largest kind of typical width uh, integrated bin, you know, like a pull out bin with nice big bins inside, again, is gonna be a, a 600 millimeter wide cabinet. And also keeping in mind that I do want space either side of both the sink and the hob or cooktop so they're not right on the end of the islands that kind of worries me a bit you know you do need space either side to put things down for if it's the hob you know for pan handles and stuff like that and moving hot pans and things it can be a little bit dangerous I think personally if it's right on the edge you know if anything falls or drops or spills like it, it's right there so having some you know, clear countertop either side of either, you know, both the sink actually and the hob cooked up <laughs> uh, is, it is to me really important. So with all of that in mind, let's start kind of planning this out. So as I said, I want the sink over here, but I want some countertop before the sink. So I'm going to say a 600 millimeter bin cabinet on the end. One 600 millimeters because that's going to match the 600 millimeter wide dishwasher, the other side of the sink I want to do. And I'm keeping all those three items together in my cleaning zone. So what I'm envisioning here is a 600 millimeter wide bin, which will be a, a pull out bin, and then a 900 millimeter wide sink base and then a 600 millimeter wide uh, dishwasher next to that. So this, the 600, 900, 600, uh, that equals 2.1 meters. And 2.1 meters is, oh, you've guessed it, exactly half of the 4.2 meters uh, that we pretty much have to play with. So really kind of splitting this island in half, zoning out this cleaning zone here, but actually some of the middle section um, is actually kind of overlap between the two, which will end up being a decent amount of clear countertop space in between the two, uh, which will act as my prep area. So I'll go ahead and just draw those bits in now. Now for this side, the cooking area, I want the cabinets that I use to match this side so we keep that balance. So I want a 600, a 900, and a 600 uh, on this side as well. So 600, 900, 600. Again, the 900 is gonna be where the hob or cooktop is, and that's gonna be uh, kind of so in the middle, if you like, of this particular zone, so it's got space either side. And I want to use drawers for all of these cabinets here. In fact, I want to use drawers or drawer fronts uh, for all of the cabinets on this side of the island. So that way it keeps everything looking the same and uniform when you're looking at the island. Yes, I like balance. <laughs> and I'll explain a little bit more about how I'm gonna do that in a second, but let's just draw in these other cabinets so then we've got this side complete. So there we go, we've got some nice draw packs either side of our hob in the middle here, again with drawers underneath. Now in terms of the hob or, or cooktop, uh, I already know that the clients talked about having a venting hob or an induction hob with built-in extractor. And because it's a new build, they've already discussed, I think with the builder, uh, about getting the venting in place, because they can do that. They can get that in ahead of time, which is perfect because then it can be extracted to the outside. And if that isn't possible, you could have a ceiling cooker hood, maybe flush nicely in the ceiling above, and then vent it out through the ceiling to the outside, making sure that it is vented out. If you can't have a, a cooker hood that is actually extracted out to the outside and, and vented out, because this is a new build, 
field and because we're in the UK here, uh, you do actually still need to have some form of extraction to the outside uh, to pass building regs. And it does have to be a particular power depending on where it's situated in the room. Uh, but there are other ways around it. You don't have to have the extraction from the cooker hood itself, but you do still need to have something in the room, uh, probably on a wall up here, for instance, uh, that does actually extract to the outside uh, in order to pass building regs. Now, as I mentioned just a minute ago, I want all of these to be drawers because these are drawers. I want it all to match, really. Again, it is a kind of balanced thing. And if you're looking at it from the front, having kind of cabinets split with drawers here and then uh, full height doors on this one, especially with the sink being a different size, uh, the doors will be a bit different. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I think, especially as it's kind of uh, divided in half, I think it could still work, but you know, think about these little details. I think if you can make it so that, that it's all, all matching and perfect, why not, you know, why not? So the way we're going to achieve drawers all along this area as well, uh, we're going to have uh, dishwasher drawers. So that'll be two separate dishwashers that pull out as kind of deep drawers. Now a brand called Fisher and Paykel make these and I've used them in lots of projects in the past. They're really great. And I think they'll work particularly well in this particular uh, kitchen and layout. One, because they're drawers and I want them to be drawers. And two, because they're two separate dishwashers, two drawers, uh, you can actually kind of um, just put a small amount of bits and pieces in one and run a smaller load. You don't have to fill an entire dishwasher uh, up to, to kind of use it. So I think it's really good if you've just got a few bits and pieces, if you're not doing you know massive entertaining or whatever, you can just run a, a small load quickly. Or if you do have a bit more, you've got the option of the second drawer as well. But having the option to run a smaller load, I think is really nice in, in this particular kitchen as well, because <laughs> we do have this kind of pantry utility room behind uh, and in there I think you know it, it's big enough to have essentially another kitchen you know so in that area I'm imagining is going to be you know another dishwasher another sink you know so so if it's really an entertaining and really lots of cooking you can just move that stuff to the back and have the dishwasher running in there have a proper full width full size dishwasher in the back there to kind of be running and deal with the mess back there and then I want to have the same drawers on the sink so I'm actually going to use a sink drawer base cabinet rather than doors which they make that's fine we can do that um, the only thing to keep in mind with a sink base cabinet is the size of the sink uh, that you can fit in it. So normally if they were doors and this is a 900 wide uh, sink base cabinet, you know, we could pretty much fit, um, you know, just slightly less than uh, a 900 wide sink. Uh, inside that cabinet. Obviously it needs to be a little bit less because of the cabinet construction, um, but you can have a, a, you know, a really, really big sink in there. Now with drawers, because you've got the runners, uh, those take up even more space. So you have to kind of go another size down for the sink, which can be an issue if, if it's a bit smaller, but a 900 wide uh, sink drawer base cabinet Really a kind of safe size for the sink could be a 700 uh, millimeter wide sink. So, you know, that would fit nicely in the drawers and still allow room for the uh, for the runners. And just to mention with sink uh, drawer cabinets, it's really the top drawer that you, you don't get much storage with. So depending on the actual uh, size of the sink, if it's a bit smaller than 700, you might be able to get uh, a slim amount of kind of storage either side of the sink as you pull it out kind of it's cut around the sink uh, but for this one probably not there probably won't be any storage on the side it'll just be the runners uh, but what you will have normally is a bit of storage kind of at the front so kind of like a tray at the front you can pull out and you can store some bits and pieces in there yeah it's not loads of storage but it is still some storage and having drawers i find just way more practical um, anywhere but especially with the sink normally that's just you know, cupboards and just wasted space in there. So having having drawers kind of cut around the sink uh, works quite well. And the bottom drawer in the sink is pretty much, you know, a, a regular drawer, depending on how you do the plumbing work. And because we're gonna probably have a void in the middle of the island, which I'll get onto in a minute, you know, the plumbing can kind of come back. And so you can really use as much of that as that bottom drawer as possible. Obviously you can cut around the drawer, you can you know cut into it, notches and bits and pieces if there are any any bits and pieces, any plumbing or for a boiling water tap for instance, if you need that uh, the boiling water, you know, the tank, you can kind of cut around that area, but still utilize the drawers and utilize that storage as best you can. And then similarly with the bin, different options here. This could be literally two 
uh, drawers. So again, two deep drawers where there's a bin in each or you know multiple bins, depending on how you configure it in those drawers that you pull out. Or we could go for, um, so it looks like two drawers from the outside, but actually they're kind of joined together and it all pulls out as one and inside you've got, you know, big bins, deep bins, again, however you want to configure them, you know, two bins, three bins, whatever it is. So we, we've got options here, but you know, from the outside, it's still going to look like drawers. So all of these will look like two deep drawers from the outside. And for these draw packs here, we're probably going to have internal drawers inside uh, inside the top one, or maybe the bottom one, maybe both kind of internal drawers inside. But from the outside, it's just going to look like two drawers and that kind of consistent look across the whole thing. So I'll just go ahead and draw those in now, <laughs> draw those drawers in now. So there you go. We've got the bin, sink, dishwasher, uh, drawer cabinet venting hob with drawers underneath and another drawer cabinet all along here kind of split down the middle we've got kind of this zone here which is cooking and this zone here which is the cleaning zone but over the two we've kind of got this prep area so a nice amount of space really between the two a nice amount of space either side of the hob itself or cooktop and a nice amount of space either side of the sink so nothing's dropping off now as i said earlier i've drawn this uh, kitchen island 1.4 meters deep and typically back-to-back -back cabinets would be 1.2 meters so we have this 200 millimeter void potentially um it could be slightly more could be slightly less whatever we want uh, for the purposes of today i want this 200 millimeter void empty space we're going to use this void for kind of three reasons really uh, one it means that for this venting hob the kind of the vent and the ducting we can kind of push out the back and then go down and utilize this empty space for the kind of letterbox venting so it doesn't take up any space inside the cabinet itself so you don't need to start cutting drawers down or have shallower depth drawers in order to kind of fit the venting we've got space behind it for that so that's one reason that's great another reason is that we want to get some power on this island and there are various ways you could do that now i know for this particular project they've mentioned uh, s box pop-up plugs which are really really nice they kind of uh, blend in with the countertop so they kind of sit in the countertop but you don't really notice on top it's not like stainless steel or anything they use the countertop itself kind of gets cut in uh, and, and placed on top so it kind of all blends in there is a cut out and you kind of push them and you know they come up and stuff but you, you don't really notice them the same because they use the countertop material on top of them now again with this void it means that we can position these sockets above the void so where the sockets themselves kind of actually live underneath you know they're not interrupting into any of the cabinets or it's not on top of something we don't have to worry about any of the runners or anything like that you know they've got their own void space and same with the electrical you know the wires and stuff like that can just kind of live in this void so it's so it's perfect for things like that as well and the third reason it kind of comes down to the scale of this project so having you know 1.4 meters for this island having it a bit deeper than you would normally say um, I think really helps with the scale of the project you know it's such a big room um, that the island can definitely take that extra extra kind of depth to it because it is so wide as well in fact we could really even go up to 1.5 the only thing we need to keep an eye on there is you know countertop slab sizes and, and things like that if we've definitely got enough so I've done 1.4 to play it safe but you know this could easily be a bit bigger 1.5 1.5 whatever it is so I'm going to go ahead and just draw the line in for the void so we can see where that is and where those sockets could potentially be so there you go that's your void so now we just need to decide what we're going to do on the back of the island here now although this is an open plan dining living area and we do have the dining table kind of just over here uh, i think the room is big enough to still warrant having some seating on the island because uh, it is there's still a bit of separation between them and some more kind of informal seating on the island i think will still work really well great for entertaining and just kind of a bit more of a casual interaction between you know whoever's cooking and somebody sat here with just the scale of the room and you know the scale of this island and stuff if you're stood here cooking wanting to chat with somebody sat at the actual table it still might feel a bit far away and you know not as personal so with that in mind i do want to get some seating on the back of the island now this is an area where again we could do 
lots of different things, lots of different design options, and it really does come down to kind of personal preference and what the client and you know what you want out of the space. So for instance, you could have this kind of whole area as like a big overhang um, and have lots of seating here, you know, 4.2 meter island. That's really, you know, enough seating for sort of seven people comfortably, maybe more if you got a bit closer, you know, so loads of seating over here, just a kind of big overhang like that. Personally, I don't want to do that <laughs> with an island this big in this room. I really want to kind of ground the island and, and give it more weight. So if you just have uh, an overhang here, you kind of lose the weight of the island a little bit when you're kind of looking at it from the sides, um, you know, or, or from the back from the main kind of living area as well. Uh, I'd rather have some some full depth cabinets either side here and, uh, you know, full, full length kind of end panels on the side here. Or even if you want to do a waterfall countertop there kind of maximize that you know you use the full depth of the island there to really give it some some weight uh, and give it some gravitas <laughs> to the to the room because it is such a big room and it is such a big island so there are other options you could have the waterfall edges either side and then have some you know some cabinets some full depth cabinets kind of coming into the back of the island leaving some space here for seating something like that or maybe you could go for something a bit more kind of sculptural and organic on trend right now. Uh, maybe you could have some kind of curved cabinets here just to kind of soften this edge. You know, you've still got a decent amount of kind of end panel over here. You wouldn't necessarily have the waterfall edges or that you could still kind of sculpt something, but you'd still have, you know, a decent amount here for, for end panels to kind of give it some weight, but then just kind of soften it a little bit here, have some curved cabinets either side and curve that countertop on top with it just to kind of soften that. And then maybe some more cabinets or drawers or whatever it is, kind of again, bringing it in, depending on how many seats you want here. Or if you don't, you know, you don't need the cabinets and things like that, you could even kind of create, uh, you know, with some kind of framework, create some more curves, kind of actually kind of come, uh, so it's a curve around here and then kind of maybe curve back in again. The worktop would continue as an overhang, but looking at it from the inside, you know, that you could have a kind of curve, more sculptural, if, if that's what you want, kind of really kind of soften that and bring in a more kind of organic flow to the island. That could be nice, you know. My point is there's lots of options here, you know, it really is your imagination at this point. For the purposes of today, I think I'm going to kind of do a bit of a mix, really. Uh, I think I want to put some curved cabinets on the end. So these are full depth cabinets, but they've got a gentle curve to them just to kind of soften that. And the worktop on top, uh, the countertop is going to is going to follow that as well. So you'll have some curves here. And then I think maybe a cabinet or something uh, next to those curves. And then the middle bit is going to be for seating. In fact, the cabinets could even be wine coolers. That might be quite fun. You know, why not? Let's let's have some fun. Let's put some some bits and pieces in, you know, we can do whatever we want here. So maybe we could have two wine coolers, two 30 centimeter wide wine coolers either side. That could be quite fun. Again, we're keeping this balance. We're keeping the symmetry. One could be for your white wine. One could be for your red wine uh, or one could be for wine. One could be for soft drinks. It doesn't matter. Um, but just kind of utilizing that as it's the kind of more entertaining area. Again, if we're zoning uh, the kitchen, you know, the back of the island here uh, for the seating area is going to be that kind of seating zone, that entertaining zone. So having access to some, some drinks, you know, wine, soft drinks, whatever it is that you like to drink within that zone is another great way to kind of utilize those spaces and use zoning uh, as part of your kitchen design. So I think I'm gonna go for kind of curves either side, uh, and then a wine cooler either side as well. Then it's gonna to have to be an end panel just to kind of uh, finish it on either side. And then the middle bit is going to be for seating. So the overhang there is gonna be for seating. We could have some shallow depth cabinets uh, behind there for more storage. If we needed more storage, you know, they could be tucked under the overhang. Uh, I don't think, you know, more storage is really going to be a problem in this particular design. Uh, we've got a lot of storage already on, on this side of the kitchen. You know, lots of drawers here. We'll have some bits and pieces here. But ultimately, really, we've got a whole nother kitchen back here. So we can, you know, luckily we can kind of do a bit more what we want here, be a bit more kind of sparing. We don't need to worry too much about maximizing every possible inch for storage. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in the curve cabinets, some wine coolers and end panels. And then in this area that could have been shallow depth storage, I think I'm just going to put, you know, an end panel there just to kind of finish it off um, and give us the, the overhang for seating. I don't think we need cabinets there. 
So there you go, that's the back of the island. As I said, lots of ways we could have done this, but just for today, I've gone for the curves here. So curved cabinets on the ends, just to kind of soften the look, but still give it some weight. Uh, I've got wine coolers either side, some small wine coolers, slim 300 millimeter wine coolers. Again, these could just be cabinets or something else. They could be bigger cabinets, drawers, whatever. Uh, but I've just done this for now, end panels. And then that leaves a, a really good size area for seating. Uh, it's about 2.8, well, just, just under 2.8 meters. So easily enough for, you know, five people comfortably there. And also we've got the end panel that runs along here. This is obviously just to finish it. So it's a nice finished look, but also this panel will then support the countertops as, you know, we can't just have an overhang, you know, that's quite a large area. We do need support. In fact, I've not really talked about the island countertop situation. If you've been paying attention and stuff, you realize, you know, 4.2 meters is huge. Now we're not gonna get that out of one slab of stone, say, you know, if we're going for uh, a natural stone or if we're going for quartz, anything like that, 4.2 meters is too big. Now we could use an acrylic like Corian, for example. Uh, it won't be 4.2 meters, you know, it would come in sections, but those sections would be joint and then those joint lines would be kind of filled and then buffed out. So the whole thing would look as though it's one flowing countertop. So that's definitely an option. And you know, it's a really good option if you want the entire thing out of one material and you don't want any joint lines, you know, whatsoever. However, if you do want to use stone, you know, natural or, or man-made stone, you're not gonna get this out of one slab. Uh, you will need to have a joint line and you'll need to, you know, figure that out. So the simplest way is to probably have two slabs and just kind of split it down the middle. So this 4.2, you know, you could have a 2.1 slab, kind of this area, and then another one on this area, and then the joint line would just run right the way through the middle. That's fine, and depending on the type of countertop you use and kind of the color texture of it, things like that, you know, that joint line will be sort of more or, or less visible, really. Um, so it really depends how you feel about that. You could even go for two different types of material or two different sort of colors and finishes of material. This could help kind of uh, zone those areas a bit more and perhaps add a bit more interest, maybe something like that. However, personally, I think it would be really cool if we kind of um, almost embraced the fact that there's a joint and make more of a kind of feature out of it. I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Japanese art of Kintsugi. I think it's Kintsugi, I think that's how you say it. Sorry if I've got that wrong. Uh, but it's basically where they repair ceramics and pottery, um, but they don't try and hide the repair. So often it will be gilded in gold, that uh, the repair line, you know, where, where it's cracked once before, and that becomes part of it, you know? Um, so I think where this joint line is, I think we should almost celebrate it. So we could do something as, as simple as a kind of Kintsugi. We could, we could, gild it gold you know that could be really really cool kind of fill that element with something and make more of a, a visual striking line uh, or i think what i'm probably leaning more towards uh, is a form of that uh, but using uh, another material so say for instance um, we've not really talked about colors and things but say for instance we're using like two tones perhaps there's wood you know wood cabinets on the island and, and uh, a plain color on these tool cabinets or the other way around, you know, these could be a wooden finish and the island could be a color. Whatever it is, um, if we're introducing a, a second kind of element color, if it is wood, I think we could use that uh, element, that wooden element, that color, say, say these tool cabinets were in like a, a rich walnut color. I think we could use some walnut as the joint line. So create a strip of, of walnut that goes you know, through the island and is kind of the joint. And then we have our slabs of say natural stone, you know, maybe it's quartzite or something, marble or quartz, you know, man-made stone, whatever it is, those two either side. So the slab sizes are big enough, you know, to cover these two bits, but where the joint line is, we just make more of a feature of it. I think that could be really nice. And just to say, if we are having this strip here and the two separate slabs here, in terms of support and things, we do need to make sure we've got enough uh, support. So this is why that end panel comes into play here. That helps support, uh, you know, the strip kind of here and the edges here. In fact, we might need to have a bar underneath here kind of connecting all of this, so that building out a frame uh, underneath, which is quite common, uh, just to support the countertops, make sure that you know there's no kind of weak corners uh, if you lean on it kind of too much. So just be aware of that. You do need to support everything still. So personally, I think we'd kind of build a frame underneath, connecting it all together to give it that support. I'll just do a quick recap just to kind of walk through things again. So we'll start up here where we started before. So we've got our fridge and freezer, our tool cabinets up here. And these are positioned here so that anybody kind of coming in from the rest of the house can 
coming in can quickly sort of grab something from the fridge, a snack, a drink or whatever. Uh, they don't have to walk through into the kitchen, you know, haven't put it over here. They haven't got to walk through or walk around the island. Next to that, we've got our bank of oven housing units. So we'll have a, a single oven in here just at the right height. Then we're gonna go for the combi with the warming drawer and another single oven. Drawers, drawers, drawers underneath, lots of storage, cupboards above. So, you know, that's our kind of secondary cooking zone, if you like, um, uh, with lots of storage still underneath and all still, you know, all full height cabinets. This whole thing is full height cabinets. And then next to that, we've got our, uh, I've got it, my breakfast larder area. So these are pocket doors with countertop inside, probably internal drawers underneath. That's, that's really helpful. You know, however you want to configure it really. And then maybe shallow depth shelves above, something like that inside, you know, maybe you've got your kettle and your toaster, your coffee machine, whatever it is, those small appliances are hidden in there where it's its own little work zone really. And these pocket doors kind of slide out the way so it's easily accessible. You can still kind of walk back and forth with it if they are open. Uh, or when you close them up, you've got 600 doors, 600 doors. In fact, you know, all, all of these cabinets are, are 600 wide. And then over to the island, we've got the bin, the sink, the dishwasher, and then we've got drawers either side of the hob, which is gonna be a venting hob, and it itself has drawers underneath as well. In fact, this whole thing is gonna be drawer fronts, so two deep drawer fronts. And by doing this, we create our zone. So we've got our cleaning zone with the sink, the dishwasher, and the bin, kind of prep zone that overlaps the two, which is really nice. And then our kind of, what I call, active cooking zone this is where you're actually stood and cooking and we've got ovens behind uh, so again if we need to check on the ovens and then come back and whatever you know it, it's all within here i know we talk about the kitchen triangle a lot you know sort of the fridge freezer or you know refrigerator the sink and the, the stove area but when the stove cooked up hob whatever you want to call it is separate to the ovens, you know, that's what I'm more focused on. I think the ovens are kind of like a secondary uh, cooking. You don't really stand at the oven stirring, do you? You know, it's, it's this area that I, I kind of call the active cooking area that I think about a little bit with the kitchen triangle, but more, I think, in terms of zones now, you know, especially an open plan thing like this and this, the scale that we're in, you know, it's still not a, still, you know, we've still got the kind of loose triangle here, but really it's the prep zone, you know, it's the cooking zone, it's our, our storage for refrigerating zone, it's our cleaning zone you know we've got kind of more storage over here non-consumable storage and sort of I guess to some extent in in these cabinets as well but this is also a kind of breakfast zone or coffee zone that kind of thing and then we've got our entertaining zone you know so I think it's more about workflow and zones and positioning them in the correct places and then we've got the back of the island I've gone for some curved cabinets just to kind of soften this island a little bit it is a big island it, you know I think just softening the corners is quite nice give it a little bit of a more organic feel which is on trend right now I've then gone for wine coolers uh, on either side, these slim wine coolers. They don't have to be, they, they could be cabinets, it doesn't matter. And then a seating area here. So this overhang, you know, this nice overhang for seating. I put for four seats, you know, four seats very comfortably. You probably could fit five if you, you know, get a little bit cozier, but four nicely spaced out seats there as well. So, so this is the whole thing. So that tool bank and then the islands, but we've We've designed it in a way that, like I said, we've got these these zones and this this flow between everything. And don't forget, you know, we do have this pantry area, basically a second kitchen up here. So storage isn't the most crucial thing. You know, we've got way more storage in here and more space for you know extra appliances. As I mentioned, probably dishwasher, probably another sink, other bits and pieces. But for a kind of entertaining and everyday use, uh, this kitchen I think works really really well. And we maintain the, the balance and symmetry of the room as a whole. Remember these walkways are exactly 1.4 meters. I've allowed 1.4 meters uh, in front of the cabinets here. So this all feels really, really balanced. The island is then central to this. And then obviously these tall cabinets all fitting within here uh, centrally again, and all being the same width, door width, 600 millimeters. And the only kind of visual thing you see being the, the ovens and that all being balanced in here. <laughs> Everything is balanced and, you know, we're really paying attention to these bits and pieces. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my hands gesturing and thumbs up along the way. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll love this one where I'm doing the same thing and drawing out another kitchen design and talking through my process. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.